Hey, Math 6, it's Mrs. Spence. I am back with you for week two, working with integers still, but this time talking about absolute value, comparing and ordering integers. All right, so we are going to begin by reviewing absolute value. Okay. So remember the definition for absolute value is the distance that the number is from zero on a number line. Okay, and the biggest thing to remember about this is that with it being a distance, distance can never be negative. Okay, you are either traveling in a direction or you are standing still. All right, it doesn't matter if you are traveling left. We're not going to say that because we're walking left, we are going negative. That's not necessarily true. Um, so it, the distance is just the number of steps that are taken. They are not giving you any kind of direction left or right. So with that, we can remember that absolute value will never be negative. So if you ever see an absolute value problem, you know that the answer will always be positive, okay? Uh, for example, if we have the same number here, but we're looking for the absolute value of negative seven, remember these little bars are the symbol to tell you that you are looking for the absolute value or the distance that that number inside of it is from zero on a number line. And we look at the same thing with the negative and the positive, it is still seven steps away from zero on the number line. And let's take a look at our number line over here and I see exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so we had negative seven and positive seven. All right, and when we count our distances from zero, this is where we're aiming for, right here. Okay, so negative seven was first step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took seven steps to get from negative seven to zero. It is seven units away. And let's count positive seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, also seven, seven units away. It's not negative seven units or positive seven units. It is just seven units away. Okay, so that is where we get our absolute value. And it is different from the term opposites. And this is commonly mistaken. These two are commonly mistaken. Remember, we talked about opposites last week. And opposites, just like left and right are opposites, negative and positive are opposites. And so if we are talking about looking for the opposite of negative 100, the opposite of it would be on the other side of the number line, a hundred steps and it would be positive 100. These are opposites. Okay. They are similar to absolute value in that they are talking about the number that is the equal distance away from zero on a number line, which is technically the absolute value definition, but it is just asking for the equal distance away, not the absolute value of each number. So don't confuse those. All right, and then the next thing that we're going to review is comparing integers. When we're comparing integers on a number line, the numbers farthest right are going to be your largest numbers. So if we look at our number line, the numbers that are farthest right are going to be our largest numbers. And we know that especially when we work with the positive side, we know that two and 10, of course, 10 is larger. If I offered $2 or $10 to someone, most likely you guys are all gonna take the $10 because it's more money and we can definitely see it on the positive side. But that same rule applies over here on the negative side. Numbers that are farther right are larger. For example, if we look at this negative nine, and we say we owe somebody $9, I would rather have $2 in my pocket than owe somebody $9. I would definitely rather have $10 in my pocket than owe somebody $9. And I would rather even be broke, have no money, 
then owes somebody negative nine dollars. And all of these numbers are farther right than negative nine on the number line. All right, so there are multiple ways that you can help yourself figure out which number is larger when you're comparing and also when you're ordering numbers. If you are a visual learner, you're probably gonna be visualizing this number line and you're gonna do just what we've been saying, which one is further right as we go this way, okay? Then that's gonna be my largest number. Um, some of you, if you're kinesthetic learners, you are actually going to take your finger and if you're comparing, let's say four and nine, okay, you're going to actually take your fingers and you're going to put your right finger on number nine and your left finger on number four. And you're going to say, okay, whichever one's in my right hand, that one is the largest number. Okay, so we would know that, that in that case, it would be nine is larger. Um, it's very helpful also over here on the negative side. Let's compare negative three and negative eight. All right, and immediately you might instinctively say negative eight is bigger because eight is a larger number than three. But we have to remember that once it crosses this barrier here of the zero, it kind of is opposite world or twilight zone is how I've referred to it before, because what you think is supposed to happen, it's going to be the opposite of that. All right. So let's use our finger trick again on this. I'm going to put my right finger on the negative three and my left finger on the negative eight. And whichever one's in my right hand is the larger number. So technically negative three is larger than negative eight. Um, and then if we use the debt scenario, you can also see this. Um, and this is the third way if you're just going to analyze through this, if you're an analytical learner, if you're going to analyze this situation, is it better for you to be owing somebody only $3 than owing someone $8? And yes, this is the more ideal situation to owe less than the negative eight. OK, so all of those are tricks and ways that you can help yourself when you're comparing and ordering these integers. All right. Um, some basics to keep in mind. Positives are always bigger than negatives. OK, so if you're comparing and you have um, a positive and a negative that you're comparing, no matter the number, if you just see one is negative and one is positive, you can immediately say that the positive is bigger than the negative. OK, um, the other thing is if you are looking at zero. Zero will always be bigger than any negative. OK, it is farther right. It is better to be broke than to owe somebody money. Um, and then the last thing to remember is when you're comparing um, negative numbers that what you feel like should be the bigger number remember is in opposite world over here once we go to the left side of that zero and you would rather owe somebody less money and that is the greater situation or you will have more money in your wallet faster if you owe less so that's kind of another situation that we talk about there all right, let's now look at ordering numbers. All right, when we are ordering numbers, the biggest mistake that I see students make is in not reading the directions carefully. Um, that is the greatest mistake that I see over and over again. Let's look at this example over here in this worksheet that you have in your packet for the week. It is telling us to order them from greatest to least. So we're going to be starting with our largest number and walking down to our smallest number. Um, but sometimes students just immediately think it's always least to greatest. Well, it's not. OK, so make sure that you read those directions carefully. The other thing that we might get confused on is some of the words that are used. So ascending order might be something you've never heard before. If they say put these numbers in order in ascending order. Um, ascending, I always say for the ascending and the descending, picture an airplane and an airplane that is ascending into the air is starting down and working its way up. It's ascending into the air. So we start at our low point and we work our way up high. So that's going from least 
to greatest, okay? And then the opposite of that, if it's descending, again, think about that airplane, an airplane that is descending back down from air is going from the greatest point to the least point back down on the ground. So this would be greatest to least order. Um, and then if it's in the wording smallest to largest, we are so grateful because we can definitely understand that. Or opposite of that, largest to smallest. So again, the biggest hint that I can give you about ordering integers is just reading those directions very carefully. Um, and another hint that I can give you is that as you are ordering them, cross them out so that you know that you have covered all of them. And sometimes what happens is we, we skip one and then we go, oh no, here's one that I didn't put in. Where can I slide it into its proper place? All right, so let's look at this ordering integers worksheet that you all have, and we're gonna do the first one together. Okay, we've already looked at the directions, which is our first thing that we should always do with ordering worksheets. If you have your number line that was handed out to you earlier this week, then you can physically use your fingers to touch the numbers or you can visualize them, whichever one helps, or you can analyze the situation and think about what, if you're thinking about money, what is the greatest situation for you? And that's what you're gonna start listing. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. And we're going to begin with the one that's already done for you, but we're going to talk through it here. Okay, so we're going from greatest to least, meaning I need to have the biggest situation first. All right, so all of these are negatives. We have a negative, 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 negative. So none of these are positive or even our neutral zero that we would initially list first because we know that our positives are always bigger than our negatives. So we're only dealing in this negative side of the number line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put a point on all of these numbers that we have. So we have negative 2, negative 8, negative 19. Oh, that guy would be over here. Negative 11 would be right here. And then negative 10. Okay, so I am going to label these. Okay. All right, so we're going from greatest to least. If you're using the far right trick, either visually or with your fingers, you know that the greatest one is the farthest one right, and that's negative two, which they did list first, followed by, and I'm gonna cross it out, followed by negative eight, then negative 10, negative 11, and last, negative 19. And that you can see your example was already done for you. And they did go from least to, or excuse me, from greatest to least. Greatest scenario, owing the least amount of money down to owing the most amount of money, which would be the least uh, beneficial for you. All right, let's look at this next example here. All right, so we have, and I am going to erase our dots up here. I'm going to start this time by analyzing it with our um, debt and money situation. Okay, so we have zero dollars, which is better than owing four dollars. So this is neutral. This is negative. This is negative two. We have a positive three and a positive five. So we're going again from greatest to least. So the most money is going to be between these two, which we know five is better than three or more than three. So we're going to do five, then three. And again, I'm crossing them off to make sure I don't skip any. And then now we got to look at is zero bigger or are our negatives bigger? And we know that zero would be the next largest because I would rather be broke than owe money. Okay, so now the next greatest situation or scenario for us would be to owe the least amount. So that would be negative two followed by negative four. All right, now if you are using the number line either visually or with your fingers, let's list or graph the numbers that we've been given. So we've been given zero, we've been given negative four, we've been given negative two, three, and five. So visually we can see that everything further right is largest. So this would be our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth number if we went from greatest to least. 
which it is. All right, guys, I hope that that helped. Have fun practicing the next two days. Friday, you have a game to play with an at-home parent. So I hope that you enjoy that activity.